The concept of separation of powers begins with the idea that a government where one person holds all the power can quickly devolve into tyranny. By spreading power among different groups of people, it becomes harder for any one person or one faction to impose tyrannical policies because there will be other people in a position to stop them. As James Madison put it, ambition must be made to counteract ambition. To situate separation of powers into our overall framework, we can envision it as a limit on government. Even if one level of government taken as a whole might have power to do a certain thing, it could be an unconstitutional violation of separation of powers if that thing is done by officials from the wrong branch of government, or if it's done by the right branch of government but in a way that unduly interferes with the other branches. At the federal level, separation of powers is found in the U.S. Constitution. At the state level, all of the states have some roughly analogous version of separation of powers, but the details of those will be established by state constitutions and not the U.S. Constitution. Modern separation of powers begins with a legislature that has responsibility for deciding the policies that the government will pursue. And these are ordinarily expressed in legislation or other congressional action. A separate executive branch is responsible for carrying out and enforcing the legislature's chosen policies. Many other constitutional democracies have a parliamentary system, where the enforcement is carried out by a prime minister who's selected by and answerable to a majority of the parliament. By contrast, the American president is elected separately by the people and is not necessarily politically aligned with majorities in Congress. Finally, an independent judiciary is responsible for resolving legal disputes between parties, and this can include disputes where the powers of the various branches of government are important issues. There's one separation of powers question that you are already very well familiar with. It can arise in any case where a party claims that a law is unconstitutional, even if separation of powers isn't the theory for unconstitutionality. Now, in these situations, the legislative and executive branches, known together as the political branches, are aligned with each other. Congress enacted the law, and if the constitutionality of the law is questioned, the executive branch sends Department of Justice lawyers to court to defend it. So where's the separation of powers problem? It involves the role of the judiciary. When is it proper for a court to invalidate actions taken by the other branches? All of the debates about the optimal approach to judicial review ultimately involve a form of separation of powers. In a much smaller set of cases, separation of powers is the central question, rather than being a background question about intensity of judicial review. In the situation symbolized on this slide, each branch of the government could be performing some action that would ordinarily be considered constitutional, like Congress using one of its enumerated powers to enact a statute, or a court issuing a subpoena to a witness. But on the specific facts, the particular use of those powers might endanger the balance among the branches. These are cases where the main issue is separation of powers. When separation of powers conflicts arise between Congress and the president, they typically get resolved politically without going to court. Most often, one of the political branches backs down, or maybe it gets voted out of office. As a result, there's not a huge body of case law involving separation of powers between the legislative and executive branches. Many of the cases are fact-specific, making it difficult to make reliable comparisons across cases. What this means for lawyers is that some separation of powers questions have to be decided with regard to first principles. We're working with general standards and not specific, detailed rules. The next video will look at some of those standards.